I'm Simon Mole, and I am a poet. I'm here in North Watford Library to do some poems for you. And I'm going to start with one about my favourite animal, the bombardier beetle. Now, the reason I love this little legend is because it's got a blaster on its bum, okay? And now, and in its like second tummy, it brews up poisonous, toxic, boiling hot chemical stuff in case a frog or a lizard or whoever comes to try and gobble it up. Uh, so I tried to write a poem imagining that I was that beetle, scaring off some frogs. And this is how it goes. Oi, froggy, stay back, or it's pop, pop, pop. Oh, I should have said, that pop sound is actually the sound it makes, a really loud pop sound when it sprays out from the cannon on its bottom, all right? So I'll just, I'll start that again now. I just wanted to clarify, that's some non-fiction info for you there, guys. Oi, froggy, stay back, or it's pop, pop, pop. You're looking at a beetle with a gun on its butt. And right now, I'm loading up bubbling bomb blast explosions in my guts. Oi, froggy, stay back, or it's pop, pop, pop. Rapid fire, 20 shots, super scorcher, ultra hot. One more move and I will shoot, boiling hot, toxic juice. Oi, froggy, stay back, or it's pop, pop, pop. So, I really enjoyed writing that poem because I got into the voice of the Beatle and writing as another character can be a really fun thing to try. Um, another thing I often do is write about stuff that I love. So like favorite foods, experiences, time of day, season, weather, place, anything that you love could be a really good idea as a start point to inspire some writing. Uh, and my daughter and my son absolutely love football. And they've been saying to me for ages, oh, we need to write a football poem. So I worked um, with my son to come up with this. This is for the shirt and the shorts and the boots. This is for the slides and the blocks and the dives. Swivel, turn, shoot. This is for the fist bumps and the high fives. This is for the step overs, back heels and hat tricks. This is for the practice, practice, practice. The cold nights at training, the rained off matches, all the missed penalties and fumbled catches. This is for the cheers and the shouts and the rules that put the strength in your legs so you go back for more. You see the space, make the run and it's yours, clean through or go. Just a mini little millisecond pause, then you bang it, hit the sweet spot really connect and that feeling when the ball hits the back of the net is a feeling that you never forget that's what it's for the thing is uh that my kids are a bit better than me at football and i thought i really wanted to get better obviously i could have practiced but i also thought maybe i could use magic the power of poetry to conjure up some more skills for myself so i'm going to be back in just a fraction of a second with my spell book. Here I am again with a spell for infinite football skills. One blade of grass from a penalty spot. A half-eaten apple starting to rot. Messy shoelaces tied in a knot. A bath full of bright green dragon snot. A teaspoon of venom from a bullet ant sting. A jar of trapped echoes from a crossbar ping. Seven super crispy fried chicken with bright wings. And don't forget to add a pinch of nutmeg. Then mix and stir and mash and whisk. Whisk and mash and stir and mix. An empty stadium. A winter night. In the centre circle, under floodlights, chant these words for 90 minutes and your football skills will be infinite. Wazmikazaz, Eternalus Burnalus. Wazmikazaz, Eternalus Burnalus. Warning, all seemingly successful spells will be subject to a VAR check. Now I was thinking we might use 
the power of poetry, that kind of magic, to transport us to another lovely library within Hertfordshire. I'll see you there. Hey, I've made it to Radlett Library. I'm going to do a few more poems for you now. This is my book, A First Book of Dinosaurs. And one of my favourite poems in the book is about the Brachiosaurus. I'll read it for you now. One Brachiosaurus weighs the same as 30 cars. Or 80 cows. Or 100 grand pianos. Which is the same as 350 reindeer. Or 10,000 cats. 10,000 cats. Imagine how many leaves you would need to eat to weigh as much as that. Another one of my favourite poems in the book is this one about the Pachycephalosaurus. It's one of the shortest, but it's one of the most fun to perform. Biff or bash, biff or bash, bang a lang or bop. My head is like a helmet or a very heavy rock, so we biff or bash our heads until we both know who is boss. Biff or bash, biff or bash, bang a lang or bop. But dinosaurs weren't just running around fighting and chasing and mashing their heads into each other all the time. Sometimes the sauropods, like those Brachiosaurus we saw earlier, or Diplodocus or other ones like that, would have lived in big herds. Uh, and I try to imagine what it might have been like to be in a herd of Diplodocus. I ended up thinking about my friends, my family a bit when I was writing it. I'll show you this poem now. A herd means nuzzling necks. Thousands of tails that talk with flicks and swishes and thwacks. A herd means sticking together, no matter what, leaving that last luscious leaf for another mouth to munch. A herd means feeling at home, wherever you are. A soft, tingly glow in your tummy, knowing you fit up. Nice one. So, this book was illustrated by Matt Hunt, and you can get a copy of it from all of you of the Hertfordshire libraries, which is great. And we are going to head off to a different library in Hertfordshire now. See you there. Hey, here we are at Horham Wood Library, and I've got two more poems for you. That last one was about a herd, and often we need our friends and family around us when we're not feeling so good. This next poem is called, I Need a Hug. I need a hug, not just any hug either. I need a hug that I can sink into, like a hot bath at the end of a long day. I need a hug that's got as long as it takes. A hug that lets me let go. One of those when your whole body goes so loose and floppy, you can't even hold yourself up. Good news. You don't have to. That's what the hug's for. You need a hug like that. A hug that really squeezes, but still leaves me space to breathe. I need a hug that checks if I want a hug. A hug that fits me, like an old hoodie, with a hot water bottle stuffed up the front. A hug that stays with me, long after it's finished. A fuzzy, warm feeling from my head to my toes. All right, so after a good hug like that, I'm feeling recharged. I'm feeling ready to try and bring some change about in the world. And the good news is that we can use our words to do that. So this last poem I'll do for you is called Your Words, Your World. You could write a slogan on a protest sign, hold it high on a march alongside a million others. You could write your name next to lots of other names. A petition makes them listen, says we all want change. You could write a letter to a boss or politician, tell them how you feel, ask them what they're going to do. You could write a headline for your own newspaper, then deliver them to neighbours, really hit them with the truth. You could write a book 
or a poem or a song. Play it loud for a crowd, get them all to sing along. Your words can change, your world can change, your words can change your world. Nice one. I hope you enjoyed the poems today. Thanks for Hertfordshire Libraries for having me. See you soon.